my genetics and how I view them right now is completely different to when I first started. My perspective on genetics has massively changed. I've also had the benefit of coaching for eight years and I've seen how things play out for different people. And I want to just give you a broad level analysis of what it means for you as a person and as an individual. So let's have a look. Now, if we look at typical responses to any kind of adaptation, so that is training, it is also your immune system, or recovering from colds, flus, and various other things, even just your skin's ability to adapt to the sun and how quickly you get a tan. You have a range of human responses, okay? It's kind of like a bell curve. Now, as our species moves on, generally you're gonna see on average more favorable responses because the ones who couldn't hack the pace, the genetic limit that couldn't hack the pace will be left behind. And the ones that can will carry on and propagate. That is the law of biology. So for the most part, as of right now, you have this bell curve level of response where you have most people right in the middle and they're mostly about average. You get some of the peak outliers and you also get some guys who just are not really particularly blessed with their adaption to stimulus. But bear in mind where we are now in terms of human evolution, most people are going to have a pretty good range of adaptive responses to most things because if they didn't they wouldn't survive so just bear that in mind whenever you hear any discussion about genetic potential there's a few things you need to know here just based on this first slide it's a range of different responses but mostly they should be fairly positive at this point now with that said i just want to introduce the topic of easy gainers and what they are and that helps to frame the rest of the discussion because in looking at the guys who are at the top of the genetic pile it gives us a bit of insight into how the rest of us gain because we see such striking differences at that level so just a couple of examples from the drug world but they are good examples for the point that i'm trying to make so we'll go with the jay cutler of ronnie coleman rivalry jay cutler reportedly gained about 50 pounds of muscle in his first year of training okay now the large majority of the time jay competed in a fairly tight range between about 255 pounds to 275 pounds pretty tight range right across his entire career okay now you contrast that to ronnie coleman ronnie was about 240 in his early contests and he continued to gain right up to 290 so basically he gained about 50 pounds of muscle across 10 years so the difference here is Jay built a large bulk of muscle in a flash. And then he hung out at the top, just made some small improvements. Ronnie, on the other hand, he continued to just get bigger and bigger, slowly, consistently. While they both had amazing genetic responses and obviously gear, the point that I'm trying to make is their end game potential, which was enough for them to both win Olympia, their end game potential was not determined by their initial response. Like initially, no one thought Ronnie was gonna win anything, okay? So just bear that in mind for the rest of the discussion because it's relevant to us as well. So just to reiterate the point, the vast majority of people will fall into the average range. That is their response to both training and diet. Now, another little insight, how many of you have one or maybe two or three body parts which just don't gain very well? Like I do, my biceps and my delts just don't respond very well and when everything else is going right they don't tend to do as well with the same amount of training the same level of training so my biceps and my delts are my weak areas you could say they are my hard gaining body parts based on the rest of me okay so that gives us another little insight worth bearing in mind so it leads us to the question what is a hard gainer and uh, I'll just note here before I go on to the rest of the discussion. In general, most people don't improve lagging body parts by training them less often. <laughs> okay. It's generally not the advice you're given. But weirdly enough, that is the advice given to hard gainers in some of the hard gaining circles is to train less. And we'll cover that later on in the video. But for now, in general, if you have a lagging body part, most people don't suggest 
to train them less often. That's generally not the sensible route. Sure, there's things to do with diet, quality of training, but in general, it should lead to more training. But anyway, so let's firstly, before we move on, just dispel some misconceptions around what a hard gainer is. Because I think in recent times, hard gaining has been just an excuse for people to say they don't eat enough or they train like crap, okay? So I just want to dispel two myths about what a hard gainer is. Now, if we're looking at the bell curve yeah, of genetic response, okay, we can't say that hard gainers are just people who don't eat. That's a very common line of thinking. And I imagine some people might disagree with me in the comments. That's fine. Please do let me know what you think. But the problem is just not eating enough. That doesn't say anything about your genetic response. Okay. Because we're not, we can't look at the bell curve. We're not even looking at the bell curve at that stage. We're just people who aren't eating. So you're not going to be able to see what your genetics are capable of if you don't put the things into place to get a response from training. So we can't fall back on hard gainers are just people who don't eat. Well, no, there are hard gainers out there. And people who don't eat, we don't call them hard gainers. We just call them people who haven't learned to eat yet. When they learn to eat, their hard gainingness goes. So it was never part of their genetics. So you can't really call them a hard gainer because a hard gainer refers to their genetic response to adaptation, not whether they are actually following the lifestyle well or not. You see what I mean? So if I just switch from routine to routine, week in, week out, if I don't eat enough, I can't call myself a hard gainer. I'm just a crap bodybuilder, right? So when it comes to actual genetic potential, and this is what hard gaining refers to, we can't say they're just guys who don't know how to eat or don't know how to train. We call those guys who don't eat right and don't train right, but not hard gainers. It's an important distinction to make because it will affect how you deal with the solution, the practical solution for how to actually solve these things later on. So just wanted to make that point before we go on. Now, so looking at how to fix these things, let's go back to the earlier example. Most people don't improve lagging body parts by training them less. Now, this applies in a whole body way to hard gainers, okay? And this is the first sort of key point that I want to make in this. In my experience, the vast majority of either hard gaining body parts or whole hard gainers, once they've ruled out cardio, sorry, once they've ruled out calories as an a surplus and they've ruled out improper training, they are people who just need to do more training. Basically, you should, the way you should think about your level of hard gainingness or your genetic potential is your resistance to adaptation. That's the way you should think about it. So if you are very resistant to adaptation, it means you need more stimulus. For example, let's say you, you want to get a tan but you don't tan very well. Typically, you need to spend more time in the sun. Or how about another example? Let's say you're a student and you're still studying for your exams, but let's say you're in a subject which is not your best, okay? Now, typically speaking, it, you're not gonna be told to do less revision, right? You're gonna get extra classes, you do extra things, and slowly over time, you'll get used to things, the connections will be made in the brain and you'll figure it out. But at no point, do you respond well to your poor subjects by doing less? And the same rule applies in bodybuilding. But with the proviso, you have to rule out the eating and the training first. You have to do those right. So that's the first kind of major point in this video. Then that's not just based on logic or conjecture with other body parts. This is my experience as both a trainee, but also a coach. In general, people who aren't responsive to training, assuming we get the calories sorted, and we make sure they're on a proper training program, in general, they need slightly more work. Now, I see that in my training quite a lot. I see that in my coaching quite a lot. When I'm coaching people, I make sure we get the food right first, we get the training right first, we have a moderate amount of volume across the board. If they manage to take that off and they do that all correctly, that's when I look back and I analyze and go, okay, what body parts are lagging, what aren't? If we finish a couple of blocks of training and somebody has just been messing up their diet and their training the whole time, they've not been consistent, they can't eat right. And they say to me, my biceps are lagging. I'm not going to put them on a bicep specialization. I'm going to get the diet and food sorted out first. Because again, they're not hard gaining. They're just messing up. Okay. So next, <clears throat> simple decision tree to emphasize that point. Are you gaining? And this applies to either one or two body parts or your whole body. Okay. Are you gaining? Now, if you're not, are you eating enough food? to be in a caloric, sensible caloric surplus. 
okay? Once you've ruled that out, are you training properly and also consistently? Now, if you can answer yes to all of those, that's when you likely need more work, okay? That's when you probably need to do a little bit more. And if you bring up the topic of junk volume at this point, bear in mind that is rolled in with the training properly. That means not doing junk volume, doing a decent, moderate amount of volume, which you can work hard on, okay? So are you eating enough? Are you training consistently and properly? And this applies to either individual body parts or your whole. Now, if you can say yes to both of those, then more than likely you need more work, not less, but more, okay? Now, are there occasions where even a moderate amount of work is too much. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, actually, is there any situation, Faz, where somebody could be doing the average 10 to 20 sets and that's just too much? Maybe that's a situation. And yes, it is a situation. However, those people are probably not going to be watching this video. You might think you are, but you're probably messing up somewhere before. Those people, I know people like that. Those people are so responsive that just six to eight sets per body part per week will not only be enough, but if they do any more than that, they will wreck themselves. I know people like that. Now, but imagine this. Imagine being so responsive to training that any more than the lowest stimulus can wreck you. That's not being a hard gainer. Typically, those people are huge and big and strong and usually are on the genetic elite end of the spectrum. They are the genetic outliers. They are the gifted ones. Typically, they need less work because again, it just helps to think of your genetics as your resistance to adaptation or put it the other way, your propensity to adapt. How well your body responds to basic training. Now, can you end up doing way too much? Yeah, of course. But can you end up doing way too much past a moderate amount? Maybe. But typically speaking, if you are burning out on what everyone else considers to be a reasonable amount of work, it usually points to you having excellent genetics, not bad genetics. It usually means you can get away with less. And one of the big misconceptions with hard gain is that they need to do less work. And people say you need to strip back to six sets per body part you won't be able to do more than that. I would love it if I could grow my body with just six body six sets per body part per week. It would be a dream. Imagine that. That's not a hard gainer. That's some guy who's blessed, okay? So again, it's all about resistance adaptation. And for the most part, the moderate amount of work is where most people should begin and then adapt based on that. If you do that amount of work and you're gaining pretty well, it's good, keep to it, you're probably about average. If you do that amount of work and it's, it absolutely wrecks you and everything else is in check, more than likely you've already responded quite well up to that point. There hasn't been a reasonable situation that I've seen where somebody hasn't done a moderate amount of work with a caloric surplus and training in check and they haven't actually needed more work if they're not gaining. Generally, it's the opposite. If you are one of those outliers who just gets enormous of a small amount of training, you'll already know it because you'll probably be about 250 pounds and train pretty well. Now, just to reiterate that point then, just if you, it's best to look at your level of hard gainingness as your local or whole body genetic potential and your body's inherent resistance to adaptation. That's the best way to look at it, okay? So some practical takeaways. Now, for those of you who consider themselves on the hard gaining end of the spectrum, whether that's for a single body part or your whole body, just make sure your diet is sufficient, okay? Now, people who can't gain weight, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a hard gainer. That's a diet issue first and foremost. Again, just to make that point, just because you're not eating enough doesn't mean you're a hard gainer. And it's important not to label yourself as a hard gainer because that has other considerations like volume totals and stuff like that. So you're not a hard gainer, it's just you need to fix your diet, okay? And in the same way, people who get fat despite weight gain, this doesn't necessarily mean you're an easy gainer either. There'll always be somebody in the comments saying, yeah, I'm an easy gainer. I gain weight way too quickly. You're not an easy, <laughs> you're not an easy gainer, right? You're just, you've just got fat boy genes. I sympathize. So do I. But 
it means if you are gaining weight, you need to possibly consider your rate of weight gain. Maybe you're gaining too fast or you need to consider your training. Maybe you're just not training very well and you're eating too much. Can anyone say starting strength? So some other practical takeaways are once your diet has been ruled out, consider your training. Okay. Are you broadly in line with a true bodybuilding approach? So you're not doing stupid things like maxing out every week, sing triples, just, you're using a decent moderate rep range, a decent moderate amount of volume, a sensible rate of weight gain, and you're able to show some level of progression week to week. Okay. And have you been consistent for long enough to evaluate? Mostly, broadly speaking, most people fall into that category. Most of my clients are in that category. You have the outliers, sure, every now and again, but that is every now and again. Most people fall into this category and they make progress. Most people who can't make progress on these very broad, moderate guidelines are usually doing something wrong. It's a rare occasion where they are a true outlier, either they're very genetically elite or they are in the genetic shit tier. Mostly the genetic really elite guys usually need a little bit less. They could have got away with a bit more early on, but now they need less. Usually the ones who are just not gaining at all, usually need a bit more. That's just the way I've seen it play out in my coaching experience and my training experience. And bear in mind, I've trained for 22 years. I've also coached for eight. I have a good, I have a good library of examples to choose from. So this is not just pulled out my ass. Like this is what I've seen to be true. And it makes sense. So final thing is give it time. Do you remember the example of Jay versus Ronnie? Okay. Some people will just blow up immediately and then they'll gain hardly anything for the rest of their careers. Other people will gain slower, but longer. And this is another thing, which is really important. And probably a really good example of this is Alex from Alpha Destiny. He's had a period of 10, 10 years where he's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's really accelerated over the last few years where he's got his training in check. But in general, he's been more of that slow, steady rate gain. In the end, he still looks jacked as hell. So don't assume if you start off slow that you're going to end up any less off than anybody else. I don't think anyone would have predicted Alex to look like what he looks like now when he first got on YouTube. And in the same way, my genetic potential, I would not have dreamed that I look like or I lift like what I do now. It just wasn't on my radar when I first started lifting. When I first started lifting, I thought I'd bench three plates, four, squat four, deadlift five, if I was lucky, and that would be a lifetime goal. <laughs> that was it. And, but it, there's no telling where you're going to end up. Just because you start off a bit slower, doesn't mean you're going to end up. There's been many cases of people who have started slow, but and a lot of my clients also make slow, consistent, steady weight gain and rate and rates of gain, but they never seem to peter out. They just keep going and going and going. Every six weeks we made some progress. Another six weeks we made some progress. Other people are more flash in the pan, but it doesn't reflect your end stage potential. So you're going to be here in 10 years in 20 years. You're going to be training still. Don't give up. Okay. Just because you're a bit slower off the mark, it doesn't reflect your end stage potential. And I, I truly believe everyone has pretty decent potential to be as jacked as they need to be for most things. Just if it's not there right from the first five, 10 years, give it longer, give it another 10 years. You're not doing anything else. So you may as well. So some closing thoughts. Genetics is quite a thorny issue, but if your lineage has survived this long, it's highly unlikely you have genes which are resistant to growth. It's far more likely that if you're not gaining, you're just fucking up somewhere. Just the way it is. Okay, folks. So hopefully that gave you a bit of an insight. Bottom line is we all have a good propensity to be jacked. You don't need anything special. You just need consistency um, and a good training program and slight modifications here and there. But getting the diet right, being consistent is a large bulk of it. There's so much BS out there that actually telling people just general, sensible, moderate things is almost revolutionary. <laughs> all right. I'm going to call it there, folks. All the best. See you in the next one.